Hello everyone, I am in Portugal. It's nighttime and I have just uh, stepped out of the, uh, the dinner and um, I'm here to drink tea with all of you for a few minutes. Uh, I just had a wonderful first day of the clinic and uh, God, I'm so grateful for all the different horses I get to see and all the different students I get to work with and uh, it's been a really awesome trip. Um, again, endlessly grateful for Atlas and Ari and all they taught me in this last year because uh, I have to say that clinics are really progressively easier for me and I think it's because of the work that uh, the stallions have put me through. So um, on the suggestion from one of my students, thank you, Safira, I am going to talk a little bit today about the cycles of stress. Uh, stress is always going up or coming down. Uh, it's part of life and it's something that I am beginning to appreciate a lot more. Um, stress is not bad. Stress is only bad when it comes outside the parameters of what's comfortable for any of us. And I think that we often think that the level of stress that a horse feels is permanent. It's part of their personality. And the fact is, um, it will change. It will change from morning to night. It will change from hour to hour. It will change from rainy day to sunny day. It will change when their friends change. Um, stress is one of those things that will keep changing. So we had an interesting discussion uh, where we were talking about what happens if you have a new horse and you walk out in the field and they clearly do not want to talk to you. And, you know, they turn away, they try and get away from you. What do you do? Do you let them just leave? Do you push them through that to wanting to work with you and the way I put it is it depends on how much dominance you want to use and it depends on how much money you have in the bank okay so if your horse really trusts you you can often talk them around you know convince them that actually it will be really fun to work with you if you don't have enough bank of good experiences with your horse uh, you might find that uh, it's better to just walk away, um, go do something else for half an hour or an hour, come back later. Um, the cycles of stress will keep moving. So if they are too stressed and that results in them going into flight and wanting to get away from you, that doesn't mean it's the way it will always be. It means it's the way it is at that particular moment. Now, Hopefully, with practice, we are going to, you know, convince the horse to associate, associate us with low stress. And um, the lower our stress is, the lower their stress is, the lower the relationship stress, the more likely they will want to think and play and yield and work with us. Um, but these things move in cycles. So if they're having a particularly bad moment, it's not necessarily your fault. It just, you hit that interaction at a high stress moment for the horse. Now, the other thing that I've really been thinking about a lot is stress can be both too high or too low. So when stress is too low, horses fall asleep. Sleeping's not bad. Sleeping's very healthy, but it's really difficult to hold a conversation with your horse when they're sleeping. So when the stress in the environment or the stress that the horse feels is too low, they will not be very interactive with us. Now, I'm going to say something kind of controversial here. There's a lot of trainers out there who are preaching it's all about relaxation. If you can get the horse to relax enough, all your problems go away. And the thing is, this works if you're a dominant trainer. So my description of dominance is where you can turn the horse's answer of no, I don't want to do that, into yes, I will do that. 
Dominance is where we turn no answers into yes answers. Usually you need some sort of tool to do that. Here's the thing, if you get your horse relaxed enough, it becomes very easy to turn no answers into yes answers. If stress is a little extra low, they can handle the pressure of dominance. Now for me, I don't like to use dominance. Um, I like to ask questions of my horses that I know they're going to say yes to. Or even maybe, I don't mind turning a maybe into a yes, but if my horse is saying no, I asked the wrong question. Like, I don't want that kind of relationship. Um, some people like it, but uh, for me, um, I would prefer to break my training down into small enough pieces that I don't have to turn the answers of no into yes. Instead, I ask questions that are either gonna get an outright yes from my horse, or I ask questions that get maybe and we can nudge that maybe into a yes. So that means I don't want my horses too relaxed, okay? Because if I get my horses too relaxed, they, they start saying no to things just because they're sleepy. And that's not functional for the kind of work I do. So for me, I want that stress level right in the middle, not asleep and not in fight or flight but I'm going to respect the cycles, okay? Even within a really functional range, stress will be higher sometimes and stress will be lower sometimes. And when stress is lower, horses can tolerate more pressure from me. When stress is higher, I have to ask my questions a little bit more tactfully. I have to be a little bit more polite about how I ask questions. And I find being really aware of that balance and that ebb and flow of stress helps me modulate what it is that I do with my horses, where I push them and where I wait for them. Yeah, exactly, George, balance. So if we can be aware of those cycles, stress is always moving. It's never going to stay the same. It doesn't, if you are alive, things are changing. Um, it's just not possible to be alive and be completely static. So when we respect that in the horse, sometimes they will feel a little more stress. Sometimes they will feel a little less stress. In our training programs, we try and put them in a range of stress that is functional for the relationship. If you really like dominant training, you're probably gonna want them more relaxed so that they accept the pressure of dominance better. If you are like me and you don't really like dominance, you're gonna want them a little less relaxed, a little bit more interested, engaged, um, focus changes and curiosity. But ultimately, you get to decide and reinforce the kind of behavior you like. If you really like relaxation and low stress so you can put pressure on your horse to change no answers into yes answers, then you're really gonna find a lot of flow and harmony and reinforce those super relaxed behaviors from your horse. If you're like me and you don't really wanna use dominance, you wanna use more collaboration with the horse, uh, you're gonna reinforce a little bit more interest and curiosity and engagement. And when they are interested and curious, curious and engaged, that's when you give them the most flow and harmony and ease in partnership. So those are my thoughts from Portugal. So I hope uh, you enjoyed a little tea time with me. Uh, I think that's about all I wanna say on that subject, but if you have any questions, definitely send them to me. Um, I'll be in Portugal for another week. Uh, on Friday, I will make a uh, Patreon video so you guys can see some of the amazing terrain here and the trees and the horses and the, that's just really beautiful. So you can expect that on Friday. And uh, then I'm on to Germany. So 
uh, love to all you guys and thanks for joining me for tea and I hope you guys have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are.